Hi everyone, it's Dr. Maureen O'Hara and I'm going to go over uh, some comma usage. I've got this fun little PowerPoint and then I'm going to go through um, using um, Princess Elizabeth from the Paper Bag Princess which is a, chi a children's book and I'm going to go over the uh, ING phrases and some other comma usage. So participials are the phrases that end in ING or we call them gerunds sometimes and these are phrases that can be descriptive and give the reader more information and these phrases are set off with commas. So when you look at this paragraph it's, some, it's just a bunch of words here, right? So Princess Elizabeth, known as Ellie by family and friends, was beautiful. Tall and willowy, she had brown hair with blonde highlights and clear blue eyes, penetrating to the very heart of all who knew her, attracting everyone whose path she crossed. Ellie was adventurous, too, riding into the dense forest at every opportunity to look for new things such as hidden pools or caves. So without the commas, I'm not quite sure where to pause for the different phrases. So here I put the commas in. So now it's a little easier to read. So this phrase, so Princess Elizabeth was beautiful is the sentence. Known as Ellie by family and friends is giving us more information. She had brown hair with blonde highlights, so that's the sentence. So tall and willowy is the introdu introductory phrase. Attracting everyone whose paths she crossed is giving me some more information there. This is a special situation with two. When it means also like this in the middle of the sentence, we set that off with commas. And then when uh, we have this ing phrase here, we're going to set that off with comma and then such as is giving us some examples. So can you see the ING phrases here? And then setting them off with commas makes it easier to read. So here I just want to go over some points about commas. So we're using comma here to set off uh, what's known as a non-essential phrase, meaning that we could remove it and the sentence will still make sense. This tall and willowy is the introductory phrase because the sentence starts here as I said before. And no comma or hyphen here because clear is describing blue. Here's another ING phrase, penetrating to the very heart of all who knew her. Here's a second ING phrase, attracting everyone whose path she crossed. Here's that special situation with two. Here's my ING phrase here. I've got two of them stacked up here. And then I'm going to have a comma with such as because it's giving me examples. So here's another paragraph. Riding forth one sunny day, passing from the safety of one castle yard into the uncertainty of the forest, Ellie heard a mournful howl. She halted abruptly, wondering what could possibly be crying so pitifully. All right, if I put the commas in, now it's a little easier to read. Riding forth one sunny day, passing from the safety of the castle yard into the uncertainty of the forest, Ellie heard a mournful howl. She halted abruptly, wondering what could possibly be crying so pitifully. So here are the ING phrases here. This one is a, um, this is the beginning here. And this is giving us more information. This is actually the beginning of the sentence. So these are both introductory phrases. She halted abruptly is the sentence and then wondering what could possibly be crying so pitifully is the extra information there. 
Okay, here's another one. The fox was so grateful that when his paw had healed, he told the other forest creatures how the girl had rescued him. Eventually, word reached her parents and others in the castle and town. From then on, Princess Elizabeth was known fondly as Ellie the Brave. So, when his paw was healed is the introductory phrase. We need a comma there. Eventually is... An introductory phrase from then on is an introductory phrase. Okay. So as I said, we need the comma here for the introductory phrase. There's no comma with that. It's a relative pronoun that introduces um, essential information. We can't remove this phrase uh, and have the sentence still make sense. Here's our introductory phrase here. No comma with and here because we only have two items in our list, parents and others. Here's the introductory phrase and here's the sentence. So where else could we use some commas here? So I've got um, some sentences here that we can use. Okay, so I have two sentences here. Elizabeth was a beautiful princess. She lived in a castle and had expensive princess clothes. So there's no comma with this and because there's no subject here. Unfortunately is the introductory phrase, a dragon smashed her castle, burned all her clothes, and carried off Prince Ronald. So I have commas here because I have elements in a series. I've got a list of three or more things, so I'm going to have the comma before and in the last item. She looked everywhere for something to wear, but the only thing she could find, which was not burnt, was a paper bag. So she put on the paper bag and followed the dragon. So um, I don't have a comma with but because there's no subject in this sentence, if it were a complete sentence. I'm having a comma here with which because it's um, introducing non-essential information. And there's no comma here with and because this is not a complete sentence. Okay, so I had these sentences before. Elizabeth was a beautiful princess. She lived in a castle and had expensive princess clothes. So if I want to join these two sentences together, then I can use and with the comma. So she lived in a castle and she had expensive princess clothes. Because there's no subject here, that's why there's no comma with and. Same thing here. There's no comma with and because there's no subject here. If I wanted to have a subject and then I would be joining two complete sentences, I would have the comma with and. So she put on the paper bag and she followed the dragon. Those are two complete sentences. Okay, what about with quotation marks? I've got the dragon saying a few things here and uh, Elizabeth is saying a few things here. Okay, so we're going to put the comma here before the quotation. We've got quotation marks here. So all of this is what the dragon said. So that's why I have the quotation marks here. I've got the comma with but because I've got two complete sentences. Okay, here's my quotation. This is what Elizabeth said, so that's why it's in quotation marks. I have the comma here. Here's the next sentence that she said. And I've got the quotation mark inside the, I've got the question mark inside the 
quotation because that's what she said. If um, depends on if the qu question mark is part of the quotation or not, whether it's going to be inside or outside. Notice how with the um, commas and periods, they're all on the inside here. Same thing here. So this is more typical of um, English literature, not so much with scientific writing, but I'm just using it as an example. Okay. So again, I'm not going to have a comma here because I don't have complete sentences on either side. Have a comma with but here because I've got two complete sentences and the periods go on the inside. So I don't have a comma with this and because I don't have two complete sentences. Question mark goes inside because that's part of the quotation. Okay. So here is the same information. I just highlighted it so you could see it more clearly. Okay, so if I have a quotation and a, and a citation, I'm going to put the citation immediately following the quote. And in this case, I've moved the pe period from the end of the quotation to the end of my sentence. Same thing here. I moved the period from here to the end of the sentence there. So when you have a quotation of 39 words or less, you can um, use the whole quotation in the sentence and put the citation at the end. So in this quote, the dragon, I'm quoting from the book, so that's why I've got the quotation marks here and here. Now inside what I took out from the book, there are uh, quote, there's quoted material. So we use the double quotation marks to signify what was taken directly out of the book. And now I'm using the single quotation marks to indicate what was already put in quotations in the book. So that's why I've got the single quotation marks here. And this is the same sentence I had previously, um, but the quotation that was in the book ends here. So that's why I've got the single quotation mark at the beginning and the end, and then I've got the double quotation marks for the whole passage that I took out of the book. Then um, my set, so I've got my citation here, and then my sentence carries on, and I've got the period at the end. So what if I have a block quote? So this is more than 39 words, it's 40 words or more. So I'm going to put it into what's called a block quote. So the block quote is indented. It's double spaced. There's no quotation marks at the beginning and the end. The period goes at the end of the quotation and then the citation and then there's no period here. So that's kind of an exception to the rule. And then I have this sentence here to show how the paragraph goes on. This is the end of my paragraph here. This is the beginning of my paragraph. Here's the end. So because the quote that I took out of the book has quoted material in it, now we're going to use the double quotation marks. So with a block quote, there's no quotation marks around it, so that's why the quoted material has the double quotation marks. In the previous example, I was quoting something out of the book, so I had quotation marks to indicate that, and then I used the single ones to indicate what was quoted in the book. Sounds like a lot of double talk. 
Okay, I just want to remind you that if you use four or more tables and or a combination of figures from the same article, you need to uh, obtain permission from the publisher to use them. Three or more um, in APA style does not require permission. Your instructor may have other ideas about that, so you may need to check with your instructor. If you use a block quote of more than 400 words, you must obtain permission from the publisher. If it's 399 words, you don't. If you use 800 words in any combination from the same article, then you need to get permission from the publisher. Usually that means paying a fee to use the words. So the moral of the story is to use quotations sparingly. All right, so the ING phrases are set off with commas because they're giving us examples or they're being descriptive. Very frequently, um, ING words like including have a list of items that follow elements in a series. Phrases with such as are always set off with commas when they're giving examples. This one happens to be at the end of the sentence. If the sentence were to continue on, then I would have a comma here and have some more of the sentence. Phrases with which are always set off with commas. Phrases with that are never set off with commas. All right, thank you for your attention uh, for my little adventure with Princess Elizabeth.